Hey lads and welcome back to another episode of Emulating Ronaldo and we're now at the age of 27 so we're really getting into the prime of our career um, and we've all survived apart from obviously Martin Flickersbert Howard who uh, left at the start and yeah th these are the players so you can see the teams they're at and what value they are. I'll just quickly do an overview to start with of who's the most uh, who's earning the most, who's got the greatest value, who's made the most appearances, etc. So value-wise, Alexander Dragunov is the most expensive player worth 38.5 million. Uh, plays for Atletico Madrid. And wage-wise, we've got two players earning over 100k now. Macro on 100 and Supermac on 105k. All at big teams. Um, last season, of course, I have holidayed at three seasons, but last season, Gojereski probably pronounce that wrong um, had the most appearances 54 games he played for Bayern Munich and he also was top scorer of 19 goals Zeka Juice got 15 for Chelsea we always seem to struggle with these series in terms of players getting lots of goals despite having strikers this time they are struggling and assists wise I managed to get the most for 15 assists that's quite impressive and average rating wise Arthur Sleep with a 7.61 and then Kieran Marsden with 7.51. Then if we go to international, uh, Arthur Sleep has got the most caps. He's already got to 101 caps for Singapore, which is pretty impressive at the age of 27. Uh, Goals-wise, Dean Mainwell is top scorer with eight, 38 goals in 84 games for South Korea. That's really impressive as well. And then it's Kim John Shamak with 28 in 46 for North Korea. And Zakaju is doing well as well. And uh, Gojewski's also got managed to reach 20 goals internationally already, which is quite impressive, really. Anyway, we'll go down the list. Uh, we'll start with, obviously, the keeper, Jack Walshinio, who's at Genk. So he's actually started playing for San Marino. He's got 17 caps for San Marino. We're 3.3 million and earning 11.75k a week. So the last three seasons... He has been moving on free transfers, went from AS Monaco to Lyos for, for free into Belgium, and he's done quite well in Belgium. Um, last season conceded 15 goals in 18 games for Genk, who finished second and elect have won it since 2012. That's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, Achievements-wise, that's what he's won, and his overall transfers, uh, appearance, uh, I can't talk overall <laughs> achievements. His first cap was in 2020 for San Marino. So his um, aerial ability and jump and reach aren't as bad as they used to be, which is why he has improved. Everything else is pretty impressive, to be honest. Moving on to Andre Le Giant, place with Real Madrid, absolute tank of a centre back. Four goals in 55 games for Rwanda. And, I mean, 20 tackling, 20 leadership. 19 on headings, very impressive player and plays regularly for Real Madrid lots of games under his belt over 7.3 average rating every single season in the league um, they haven't won the league since 2017 though, Barcelona and Atletico have dominated so that's uh, Dragunov has actually won the league with Atletico a couple of times achievements wise we can't really see, he did, he did win the Euro Cup with Real Madrid um, but he hasn't won anything else and hasn't won any sort of awards or anything. Oh, here we go. He's been shortlisted for African Football of the Year. So he's been named in various things there, so you can have a look if you're interested. Moving on to Super Mac, who plays for Arsenal and is Irish. Two goals in 39 cap so for Ireland, which is not that many considering how much he's earning. You'd have thought like an Irish player would have got more caps and 39 especially considering how much he's earning but he's been a bit of a tank apart from last season he didn't play many games for whatever reason but he has managed to consistently get very good average ratings and the previous season to this he did manage to get eight assists in the league 13 overall that's quite impressive achievements wise he's won the capital one cup and that's about it but he's he's been named in you know arsenal best 11 and irish best 11 and those sorts of things and team of the weeks in the premiership so he's done a, a few different things there. Moving on to our Argentinian defender, Kieran Marsden, who plays with Zenit. 
24 caps for Argentina. Looks a very impressive player. Can play centre back or left back. And he's worth 15.5 million now. He's been at Zenit for a while, four seasons now. Moved 8.25 million and has once again good average ratings overall. Not played every single game. Um, but he's done okay. He's won the Confederations Cup with Argentina. Been named in the Argentinian Best 11 and a few different awards. Moving on to the most valued player that we have. 38.5 million. Alexander Dragunov. Russian. Two goals in 64 caps for Russia. Absolutely rock for Atletico. Helping them to a few league titles. And he's consistently in the team. Very good average ratings. I mean 7.57 that league season. Um, he's been very good. And of course like I said. Has won a few competitions. It doesn't actually show on here because I haven't loaded the Spanish league, I don't think. But anyway, he's won the league with Atletico. And he's won, oh, he's finished third in the World Cup with Russia. France won the last World Cup, beating Ukraine. Let's just see how the other phase, uh, Russia beat semi, uh, Serbia in the third place playoff. Quarterfinals. Where did England get to? Canada got to the quarterfinals. That's pretty impressive. Very impressive. England got beaten 4 0 in the second round by Turkey. Moving on to Arthur Slee, plays for PSV. Obviously, has a huge number of caps for Singapore. Very impressive uh, wing back. And has been at PSV a long time. And gets very good average ratings and a few assists, a couple of goals here and there. Don't think we can see what he's won. He's won the South East Asian Football Championship. Also won a, a couple of league titles. I Ajax have been uh, pretty dominant, but it has been between PSV and Ajax. Moving on to Ewan Moffat, our Scottish right back, who's actually, incidentally, the Scottish cap the captain now. One goal in 50 caps for Scotland. Been at Liverpool a while. Moving from Celtic, not an amazing average rating, but quite solid. I'm not sure if Liverpool have won anything. They won the club world. He's won the club world championship with Liverpool because they did win the Champions League at one point before he came to the the team, and he was appointed Scottish captain in 2022. This is John Camp, uh, American right-sided defender or midfielder, plays for PSV. A lot of players play for PSV. He is wanted by Mallorca. Uh, once again, being at PSV quite a long time, getting okay average ratings, few assists, few goals. Um, has he won anything with? He's been named in the US best eleven and that sort of thing. Playmaker of puns has three goals in sixty-one games for Mauritius, who are one hundred thirty-seventh in the world, and he's at Arsenal, but. For some reason, he's in the under twenty ones at under twenty ones at the moment, but he did play a lot of games. Moved for eleven point two five million from PSG. Decent average rating. Played quite a few games. Achievements wise, he's won the Euro Cup with Arsenal since moving there. Also, Capital One Cup runners up and being named in the Arsenal Best Eleven. Big girl, why did you have to call yourself Big Girl? I always get the damn Mika song in my head <laughs> whenever I see the name. Um, he's been at Tottenham quite a while and pretty average, average ratings. Not done a huge amount but does have a few England caps now. Well, quite a few actually. One goal in 32 games for England. And achievements wise he has won the FA Cup down there a couple of times and been named in the England Best Eleven. Also won well, runners up in the Capital One Cup. Next up is Henry Hasty, plays for Genoa. I think I've always wondered if that's the way to say Genoa. I don't think it is. Somehow. Anyway, never mind. He's he's playing for Ireland as well. One goal in forty three caps, earning sixty K a week. Moved to Genoa from Norwich for fifteen point seven five million after a couple of impressive seasons with Norwich. Not a very good season last season though. Pretty awful average rating in fact. Was relegated with Norwich at one point. 
Matthew Bryson also plays for Tottenham, one goal in 55 games for Northern Ireland. Let's just have a look at how the Premiership's been. Might as well get that out of the way now. Um, mixture of teams, mainly Man City dominating. Man United absolutely walloped everyone though this season. Ten, uh, 20 points clear of second place, Liverpool. Brighton, Cardiff and Palace were relegated. Huddersfield survive. And look at Hull. Hull all the way up in fourth place. Let's just look at some of the stats, see what players doing well. If there's any of our guys, don't think there is. Anyway, Matthew Bryson, pretty poor average ratings. And obviously he's won the Capital one, not the Capital, the FA Cup a couple of times. Matt Crow, a very impressive player, plays for Man United, but only has 11 caps for England and is our second biggest earner. So it's strange that he's not really getting into the England team. Good average ratings as well, doesn't really ever score, but quite a few assists and good average ratings, and that's, yeah, that's quite impressive. He's won a few competitions with Man United, won the double this season, Premier League and FA Cup, so I'll be pleased with that. And also, they were the runners-up in the Champions League, which Juventus have dominated the last few seasons. Juventus won it on penalties, so we, I don't think we've had a a winner of the Champions League in our midst yet. Moving on to Christofferson, um, who plays for Olympiakos now, where he moved for free from Freiburg. And he's a good average rating. Didn't play it that many games, but that's quite impressive. Achievements-wise, he's been released on a free transfer. That, oh, no, wait, that's Grasshoppers. There we go. He's been named in the Norwegian Best eleven, And a few things there. He's also won the league with Olympiakos because they'd win the league there. Moving on to Yusane Bolt. He's at West Brom now. 12 Goals in 75 games for Jamaica. Quite an impressive international record there. Move for 9.25 million from Volga. And he's done okay. I mean, seven assists. Hasn't scored in the league yet. Won the Caribbean Championship three times in a row. Doesn't look like they won it in 2020, though. 22, sorry. They did, but it doesn't look like he played. Moving on to Conor McGinty, plays for Aston Villa, 17 goals in 77 games for China. And is, is doing okay, pretty average average ratings. At least most of our players are at big teams and playing in the Premiership or top divisions. Getting a few awards, but no one's really emulated Ronaldo or any world-class player thus far. I would say some of us are world-class players not quite up to the standards of Messi or Ronaldo. This is Jiminy Cricket, who bizarrely only has 24 caps for Bulgaria, considering how good he actually looks. He's in the Man United team. He'd have thought he'd have a few more than that, but moved from Firth for 9 million to Man United, and he's done very well. And obviously he's won the league this season with Man United and the FA Cup. This is me, still at Chelsea, 8 goals in 48 caps for England, worth £33 million, and I've, I've had a few good seasons, that was below 7, but the last couple have been very good, in the league especially, and achievements wise, I don't know if Chelsea have really won anything on this game, I won the, the FA Cup at the Community Shield, oh yeah we won the Premiership of course, I say we, I don't support Chelsea, I'm s talking about my player. Um, <laughs> and he's been named in Team of the Week, not Team of the Year by the looks of it. Fastest goal, 9 seconds, that's something to be proud of. Luca van der Bijl, 5 goals in 40 games for Wales, plays for Norwich now. Free kick taken is pretty incredible. Uh, of course they were relegated, which is a shame, so he's not playing in the top division anymore. And hasn't really won anything. Uh, this guy's a real star for Bayern Munich. And he's just got incredible technical attributes. Obviously worth almost 30 million. Doing very well for Poland. And very well for Bayern Munich. Um, scoring a few goals. 19 goals this season of course. 
don't know where they're playing him mainly. They are playing him up front or on left side of midfield. So he's getting the opportunity to score goals with that position. And he's won, of course, quite a few competitions. It's not showing the league there for some reason. I know it is. German First Division. Did, and maybe they haven't won it the last couple. No, they haven't. Gladbach, Dortmund and Hoffenheim. That's interesting and nice to see. A bit of variety. Bayern Munich all the way down in sixth. But they have been won in, winning the German Cup as well. Pedro Simpson, worth 12 million now. He had a slow start to his career. And he's now at Porto, but still hasn't earned any caps for Brazil. But it's probably the hardest team to earn caps for. They do seem to have favourites as well. Even amazing players miss out on the Brazil squad. They moved for 3.5 million, and he's done very well the last two seasons with some quite impressive average ratings. So it'll be interesting to see how he does into his 30s if he continues to improve. Porto have missed out against Benfica though for the last four seasons. So no title for Pedro Simpson. Our friend Andreas doing well for Greece. Is at Mallorca now in Spain. And moved to free from Grasshoppers. Obviously Grasshoppers had a few of our players as, as did a lot of uh, Swiss teams. But they're all moving on eventually. And he's done okay. Not amazing but Five goals in the league. Not really won anything, I don't think. No. May have done for Grasshoppers if we just check the league. No. Well, they did. 2020. So they won the league then, and Basel have dominated other than that. Marco Senio Taylor plays for Porto as well. Five goals in 64 games for the Faroe Islands. And he's been at Porto for four seasons now and has got an incredible average rating, 7.81 in the league. And he played 15 games, but that's a pretty unbelievable average rating. And he's won the Euro Cup with Fenerbahce and been named in the Faroe Islands best 11. That's probably not particularly hard. I wonder where they are in the world. 187th. Moving on to Dean Mainroll, also at Man United, so he's won the league and cup double. This season, of course, very impressive for South Korea. And for Man United, probably more of a backup striker. Doesn't get a huge number of goals. Moved for 10.75 million from PSV, who seem to have had every player at some point. And of course, like I said, won the double. I don't know where they're playing him. Let's have a look. M mainly, well, it's a mixture, really. Is Joseph Davies, 10 goals in 43 games for Greece. And he's at Real Madrid, so that is impressive. And moved for 1.7 million from Man United, part exchange. Don't know who was the player going the other way. He's done okay, 9 goals in the league, 11 in total. So he missed out on getting the double of Man United, though, so that's a bit disappointing. Did win the Capital One Cup at, some, at one point. So maybe it'd have been better off staying at Man United, to be honest, but you can't really turn down Real Madrid, can you? Marcus Paulsen plays for Liverpool. Danish 12 goals in 42 games. Impressive technical attributes, and has done okay with Liverpool. Never done anything incredible. Is playing up front for them as well. Uh, Achievements-wise, I don't think... Oh, of course, I keep forgetting that they did win major competition the the Champions League at one point we're nearly at the end these videos seem to be getting longer and longer as I analyze it further so I hope you don't get too bored but you can always skip through bits and pieces can't you uh, this is Matt Trevelyan eight goals in 17 games for England I think he's been wasted at Man City to be honest he could have had a much better England career if he'd moved on like th two previous seasons had very few games in the league and this season, 7 goals in all competitions, 7.01 average rating in all competitions. It is a shame, he's just not being used effectively. And it would have been nice if Man City have decided to sell him and onto a team that will actually play him. Kim Jong Shamak is also at PSV, obviously a very good North Korean career. And moved from RKC for free and... 
where he obviously had an incredible goal scoring record and has actually done all right with PSV 11 goals and then this season 12 goals, which isn't too bad at all for him. Achievements wise, can't really see. He's won the Asian Challenge Cup with North Korea, beating Malaysia. Uh, no, wait, who did they beat in the final? Um, oh, that was obviously before. Oh, I'm confused. Here we go. They beat Thailand in the final. And Kim John Shamak scored both goals. This might be a bit jittery because my computer's doing lots of things at the moment, but there was one of the goals. And lastly, Zakajis, who's obviously a prolific goal scorer for Malta. And not bad for Chelsea. He's uh doesn't score masses of goals in the league, but 16 goals and then 15 goals in all competitions this season. Not bad at all. Achievements wise, probably won similar things to what I've won. So there we go. That's the end of another episode of Emulating Ronaldo. Next episode will be when we're 30 years old. But thank you for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe. And I'd better go off and eat something. I'm pretty hungry. And I'll